Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I'm also joined by my special co-host, Michael Hall. What up? And Michael Reed. Hello, how's everybody doing out there? And it's also alumni weekend for the Washington football team, so let's talk to alumni, Mr. Doc Walker of the Hawks. How you doing, sir? Guys, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm COVID-free, and, um, you know... I feel so bad because the Terrapins have been knocked out of two ball games now. Mm-hmm. High school, so kids yeah. didn't get to play. It's different, uh, but I always say that our our brightest soldiers, men and women who defend us around the world, they get deployed for for a year. Their families are without them. They've been right. doing this. I mean, my old man was a Marine. He had three tours of duty, so I try to put that out as perspective so that we don't whine about mm. not being able That's to play true. games when right. our gladiators went out and defended the right for us, even though we're not totally equal as people in our own country, at least they gave us a premise for it. So I always have to point that out. Yeah, that right. is such a great point by you, Doc. It really is. Now, the Alumni Weekend is coming up this week, this game against the Cincinnati Bengals, and they released the uniforms. Do you like those uniforms? I've hated the ones in the past because uh, I hate all of them that I didn't wear. <laughs> you know, that's what I love about Penn State uh, with Alabama. To me, mm. the uniform should never change because you just dis- you just dis- dis- you just dis- separate yourself from alumni bases. If I didn't wear what you're wearing, I don't feel you mm. like I ought to feel you. That's what I love about the Packers, the Bears, the same uniform. Right. So then, does uh, I have to ask you then? Is that how you felt about the name change as well? Was well, no, the name change what? The uniform is not offensive. It's right. just I didn't like it. <laughs> right. the, name, the name was the name was offensive to a large number of people, in which I that I've met. I've mm-hmm. met some that is not, but the right. large majority said that it was, and so I can drop it like a right. coat, no problem. No issue. The okay. logo I have a problem with, and I still mm-hmm. honor the logo right. because right. it was done in an honorable way by the head of a nation mm-hmm. in a collaborative effort. Right. It was their idea. We didn't do it. They presented it. And I right. still honor that. Mm-hmm. But I will not defame, you know, name in that way. Um, but the the alumni deal has been canceled because of COVID. And mm-hmm. um, and I respect all of it. And like mm-hmm. I said, we have to be in, get in the habit of being inconvenienced from pleasure. Right. <laughs> you know, because we had people that went out to fight. Right. And they were underpaid, overworked, and could have been killed in duty. Mm-hmm. So I want all the country to, to get out of it, snap out of your your privileged ways, right. and take this on, you know, like a real American ought to, mm. who had people do things that we would have, I would have been scared to death to even attempt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These gladiators oh, yeah. went out and did it. So I'm a little right. fed up. The NBA guys whining about 90 days in the bubble making 15, 20 million dollars a year. Really, dude? <laughs> Seriously. Get some respect. That's our fault. Our kids, if we don't teach them history, then they don't ever learn. Exactly. I know for a fact, as being a part of a, a group that was lied to in school, mm. that history about people that look like me, I was denied access to that. Mm, right. And as a result, it shaped my foot, it shaped how I think. And then to find out that I was lied to and betrayed and the whole thing, not only through that, the history and what has happened to the government just through food product, they told me Diet, Diet Coke was okay. And they <laughs> lied, okay? And I, and I just make a gallon of that stuff. Now I'm paying a price for it. So our adults in this country, I'm putting you on check mm. because I trusted you and you weren't trust, trustworthy. Mm. So now I evaluate everything and everybody based on what it is. And I'll let you know exactly how I feel about you. Because I don't have a reason to respect you until you give me one to respect you. Absolutely. There you go. And speaking of respect uh, there, Doc, I have to ask you, you being a a former Washington football player, you cover the team. uh, You are the host of the legacy uh, for the Washington football team. If you could put a grade on each side of the football, offensive and defensive, throughout the season so far, what would they be? They're a D all the way across the board. Ooh. And I'm being nice to the special teams. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you don't win because I judge you by your record. Right. You are what your record is. This, this is not a game that you don't get points, style points. You either win or lose. I'm a win or lose guy. I'm 
I'm a black and white guy. It, you either win or lose. Mm. Because if you start fudging it based on your effort, I pay you for your effort, mm. but I will bonus you for results. <laughs> so, you know, we didn't even get to eat during the week unless we won. Mm. We didn't get treats unless we won. Go Gibbs set it up. He's the right way to do it. Mm. I parented that same way. You know, I got to feed you, but just barely if you don't get your grades right and don't show up on time <laughs> to do things I want to. I don't have to feed you well. I don't have to make you fat. <laughs> you do what I like you to do, I make you fat. You get not, a boy, That's right. You'd be skinny mini. <laughs> this ain't that complicated, man. We're undisciplined, turn the ball over. Yep. We don't respect the rules. And as a result, we make it harder for our team to win. Now, here's the good news. They got fight. Yep, These man. dudes give you effort. They, their heart is in the right place. What I question is the plan and the execution. Now, that was going to actually be one of my questions to you, Doc, is the fight late in games. Do, do you believe that that would be an indication of a progressing young football team? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's like, hey, they forget to take the trash out. Then they go running out to the bag breaks. But mm -hmm. they do pick it all up. And then they hose down the driveway afterward. Look, I like them. <laughs> but I can't love them until they start winning. Because if you show them too much love, they'll never win. They're already yeah. making enough money to not have to win. That's the difference between their generation and our generation. Mm. I don't know how much we loved it or not. I knew that we had to win to make more money. Mm. Right. So it was personal. It mm. was somebody going to get it, so we decided it ought to be us. <laughs> so you hear us in Super Bowl 17, you hear us say $70,000. And nobody mentioned no ring. We mentioned $70,000 to go out to the dog. And that's how we were built. Because they had incentive clauses in the day, you got extra if you did extra. Mm -hmm. Now some of these guys sign and it's, they take a pay cut to go to the playoff. Right. Because the system needs to be re-engineered. You ought to make a million dollars a player if you go to the Super Bowl and win. It ought to be something that it should be a million per player. Right. And then see how, how hard guys play. Right. Guys be playing hurt. Guys right. be doing what we did back on. They be sticking needles and they behind to just that's get right. on the field. <laughs> that's what you had to do. Now they just, oh, I'm hurt. You know, right. hey, IR, whatever, <laughs> take two or three weeks off. Right. It's a difference when you plan for survival as opposed to plan for just options. Right, right. So, Doc, you being a former professional, you know what it takes to be able to produce week in and week out in this league. It, it takes a hefty amount. Do you believe that Terry McLaurin is a top five wide receiver in the NFL right now? The only reason I can't say that with authority is that I have not looked at all 32 teams and their receivers. Mm. It'd be a waste of my time. I just focus on our game and what we got. I don't cover the league and I cover our team. Mm. Just off the cuff, I couldn't see how he, he'd either be there. He's in the top seven. I'd say mm. that with confidence. I haven't seen everybody. Mm. But we got some bad hombres. Because <laughs> that, that kid Hopkins down in uh Arizona. Uh, uh Arizona. Yeah. So I know Terry ain't betting him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the kid up in in, in uh, New Orleans who appears to be a jerk, but he's a monster <laughs> when he's on the field. Mm -hmm. So this wide receiver thing, I start looking at it. My boy up in, in Buffalo. I mean, it, there's some real, but I think Terry can hang with. I think he's without even taking a deep dive, he's top 10 and you right, get a right. guy top 10 in the third round who wanted to play special teams. That's what I love about this guy mm -hmm. who was a captain at Ohio state. He probably is number one in terms of character. Yep. Yep. He's probably the best guy out of the whole group. Mm -hmm. And I'm not mad at the poodle kid who's hurt now in Cleveland, all them guys, they can flat out play. Mm -hmm. But some of that other stuff they're doing, I, I, I would not have wanted to play with them. Because I played with a guy, James Arthur Monk, who was like Terry. He was right. just bigger, mm -hmm. you know. And so I've seen Art Monk, Gary Clark. You know, I have seen guys, Ricky Sanders. When you play with guys like that, I don't get that impressed by the rest of these other guys. Because mm -hmm. I saw guys who blocked, who played on special teams, and won in Super Bowls. Right, right. And sticking with the off offensive side of the ball, former tight end as yourself, what are some things that you've seen from Logan Thomas this year that you liked and some, maybe some negatives as well? Well, I, I didn't like him until last week. <laughs> you know, yeah. And last week I loved him. Mm. 
Mm, okay. Because he lowered his pads, he took it personal, he knocked people off the ball. He mm. can catch it with anybody. But that would make him just a wide receiver. He's a tight end. And that kid played with an anger that I, I loved it. He was mm. an eighth player in a game. Now, he was former line. Maybe he had passed some payback. I don't know what it was. But if I was Ron Rivera, I'd put a lion's pennant in his locker every game. <laughs> because what it did, what he showed me, I was so proud of that kid, man. I would have bought him dinner. He, he <laughs> balled out. I loved him last week. Now, is he going to be that way on Sunday against the Bengals? If he continues where he's going, he, he's elite. Right. Mm, I like good. to hear that. Good. I like to hear that. Now, yeah, I like it. And sticking with the individual players, I, I got to ask you just because I know it's a kind of hot topic around the NFL right now. How do you feel about Chase Young's play? I know the stats don't necessarily back up how well he seems to be playing. Like he seems to be doing a pretty good job according to PFF and all these other analytical measurements. What's what's your take on Chase? Plays like a guy since the groin injury. I've been waiting on. He had a groin, and I was thinking after the bye he was going to be explosive. Right. He's a he's a strong. He's effort. He's, he's got all the boxes checked. But when he said it, when I I said it when it happened, when a guy who's that athletic has a core injury, let him heal. Right. Some guys don't need their groin because they stiff as a board. This dude is such an athletic freak. He needs everything firing because he's doing pirouettes. He's spinning. He's dropping himself. He's incredible. And he's taking right. on two guys, yeah. sometimes three. Yeah, yeah. at least. You can't <laughs> do that if your body's not 100%. Now, he hasn't said a word. He's a soldier. But he's doing his job. Is he Lawrence Taylor? No. No, he's not. Right. Okay. Could he be? Will he grow into it? I don't know. Sweat is better than he was last year. Yes. Sweat is a freak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he, he's got, also, he got Chase. And then they throw Kerrigan in there for a little break. Right. So, no, I'm not, I'm not disappointed. I understand what's going on. I don't think he's 100%. He'll never say a word about it. I just mm. watch his game, and there's a burst that the groin, and maybe he gets better at it, and maybe uh, if he doesn't do anything, but a, as long as he takes up two men, me and him have no problem. Right mm. If he's stuck on one-on-one, -on -one, then he's a disappointment. Right, right. I can get anybody to take one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> the special people have to require two people, zone, chip by the back, Tight end got to come back. As long as he's, and that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He is commanding respect and forcing coordinators to stay up at night figuring things out. So I ain't mad at it. Hmm. Them two bulls in the middle, they got to give me a little bit more. Yeah. Because I put them in a level to where they're not Aaron Donald. That we know for a fact. Right, right. So forget about that. That ain't mm -hmm. that. But they could be a notch under. You got to win one-on-one. When you get to one-on-ones, you have to win at a higher pace. If you're winning now one out of every 10, I needed one out of eight. And then if they had linebackers that actually understood how to fill holes and destroy people, they'd be seen much better, but they don't. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, on Monday, Coach Ron Rivera opened the door for the possibility of Alex Smith being the quarterback in 2021. So, Doc, I'm going to ask you your confidence level 0 to 10 of Alex Smith being the quarterback for the rest of the season and possibly the starter for 2021. Not to be a jerk, but you, if you know me, I don't give a damn about anything other than Cincinnati game. Mm -hmm. They're not good enough for me to project. I don't project on people that disappoint me week in and week out. Mm. Until they learn how to win, to me, everybody's on a week-to-week -week leash with me. Mm. So I don't project them nowhere until they prove to me that I, I need to keep them around. I don't need to keep anybody around that can't win. Mm. So Alex looked really good. He's looking better. I figured he would once he got the reps as a one. And so I continue to see him go up. That's fine. He beats the Bengals. I'll feel a little bit better than the Cowboys. He can win two games now in about 10 days. And me and him be okay. But if he doesn't, <laughs> see, I don't, I don't play that. I don't care about next year because we don't know how we're going to get there and with who. I'm not going to drag a team that's 2 and 14 in the next year. Ain't no right. way. Ain't no way. But that's me. They're obviously a lot kinder. 
mm. and talk. <laughs> so, you know, who knows? They might sign him to a multi-year deal. Right. It's not, that's not my job. <laughs> hey, you had a great segue there, Doc. So let's get into the game this weekend going up against the Bengals. If there was one area of the game that the Washington football team had to dominate in order to give them the best chance to win the football game, what area would that be? So the same area it is every week, the line of scrimmage. Mm. We got to win the line of scrimmage every week both sides. on both sides. Yeah. If we don't, I don't care. Uh, Coach Turner likes to go horizontal. I'm a vertical guy. Mm. Okay. I want my bulls in the first quarter to have their hand in the dirt and to be going forward. Right. My first 10 game plays, I might run 10 straight runs right at you. Cause I want to establish the fact that this is going to be a physical afternoon. You're not going to get off the hook by me pass blocking. No, I'm coming at you hard and furious. Right. And I'm going to find a way if I get me a back that won't go down with a hangnail or an arm tackle, then brother, you're going to be looking at second and six. Mm-hmm. Then you got to deal with it. And I'm going to keep coming. Then I'm going to go play action. Then I'm going to move the pocket. I'm not going to be stationary. And they're not stationary. And Turner, the Dallas game, he was brilliant. And then what happens with these guys that are trying to make a mark instead of winning games, they start drawing too many circles. Mm. Dude, straight ahead. I got three guys. I like 41. Yep. But they all run hard. But give me 41. And let's go downhill. And let's see who wants to get punched in the face. And can they take it? Now, if, if, if I can't move the line, then hey, they got me. But if I can, I'm not letting up. See? Mm. I'm going to take time off the clock. I'm not going to turn it over. And I'm going to bloody your nose and find out on my offensive line, my five against your four, what battles are we winning up front? Mm-hmm. And if I catch a sucker, it's over. Because then you're going to have to slant to me. You're going to have to put in the box. And once you dictate that, then I'm going to audible check with me at the line of scrimmage and go opposite. Mm-hmm. I'm in control, not you. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. Right, right. And yeah. you mentioned Scott Turner. Uh, I know a lot of people coming into this this uh, off season and this season kind of thought that he was going to bring a more innovative offense, a lot more motions, a lot more play action, stuff like that. What have you seen from Scott Turner and uh, how impressive has he been or not impressive? No, no, no. Dallas, he was my hero. Hmm. Um, he didn't fumble yeah. the ball in the next game at home. Hmm. He, he called a first down. I don't mind throwing a first down. Scott was brilliant with it. And the kid fumbles. Right, right. Wide open. That's not on Scott. So, no, look, he's he's got the job. He's got to do it his way. He showed me against Dallas that he understands what's, what's possible when you get your offensive lineman feeling confident. And after I bloody your nose a little bit, then I can pass by because I've slowed you down. Hmm. If I let you get a sack, a sack is too energizing to the entire team for me to let you get the first one. Hmm. I want my guy to get your guy first. See, to me, it's psychological. I want to show you, you can't get to my guy, but we can get to yours. Mm. I can run over your people. You can't stop me. Then I go play action, and I turn Terry, and I turn 89 loose. All of a sudden, I'm turning 83 at you. We got some players. Put them in space. They make plays. But to me, it's a mindset. Right. They're trying to do the trick, hocus pocus. I'm trying to come out and say, I'm coming right at you. And if I, if you can't stop it, you're in a world of trouble. And Doc, look, we, speaking of trouble, the Washington football team put Jaron Christian on IR today. And Cornelius Lucas, who played really well in his stead, um, has not practiced yet. It's a big question mark. On, with your panic meter, zero out of 10, <clears throat> what is it? Next man up. Um, we weren't as good without Luke. Luke, I was so proud of him, man. I know. He came in. I was, so well. I was proud of both those kids. And then Luke came in, and he'd been in the league too long to let a guy who hadn't played much at all be ahead of him. Mm, right. Once he got in, he would have never surrendered it. Mm. And then we would have picked up a good swing tackle. Now, on the other side, big boy came in, and a lot of people talk about Morgan. Now you trust, see how good Morgan is. Yep. Yeah. Morgan yes. may give up some pressure once a game, maybe a sack. As soon as Morgan went on the other side, the floodgates open. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Right. So I'm challenging big boy now to say, back off the training table, jump you some rope, get your feet ready, bend your knees, and let's go fight. See, there's a reason why he was a third team guy, but now right. he's the number one guy. Right. Now we're going to see if he can elevate his game. 
and come out and compete. If not, he'd be out of the league in a year. That's the way this yeah. thing works. I have no sympathy for him. He's been there all year. Mm-hmm. He should know the plays. He's big as a house. <laughs> Bend your knees and go fight. And we'll find out if he's got any fight in it. Absolutely. So let's get into this game. Let's get some predictions. Let's get your genie hat on there, Doc. What is your prediction for this game this weekend? Will the Washington football team pull off the victory? And if they do, who would you think is going to be the best player that produced? Well, I did the last three weeks. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm an analyst. Hmm. I analyze what happened. Hmm. They don't pay me to predict. Hmm. I th- we should beat the Bengals, but it doesn't mean we will. We should beat the Giants too. Right. That whether or not they win is up to the guys in that locker room, not me. Hmm. It's up to them. It's their reputation, not mine. Mm, right. If they stop turning the ball over and jumping off sides and having stupid penalties, then yeah, they should be able yeah. to play with about 80% of this league yes. because it's pro football. It's not the Mid-Atlantic Conference. Right. Every team should be capable of beating every team every week on any week, or it's not pro ball, or you got a rotten program. And that's the emphasis about this. There are very few upsets to me in pro football. Mm. And so look at how the Cowboys had the Steelers in a death match after we had gutted them. Mm -hmm. So that's what this league can do. If you put the pressure on your players to earn their money, that's what you'll get. Mm. I'm all about it. Now, Jason Wright recently just talked about the Washington football team name could very well be the permanent name. I have to ask you, Doc, what's your feeling with that? I call them the football team. I'm good with it. Awesome. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. As long as they win, we'll grow into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I kind of like the fact that we only won with the football team. You know, I go, oh, okay. I hated it in the beginning. Uh, now I'm going, okay, the football team. Now, if they were winning, it'd be big. We'd be walking around football team. Like we'd be all over. <laughs> if you win, they could be the skunks. It doesn't matter if they win. And so I'm not going to care about a name. I care about the game, how they play. And then we'll deal with all that later. That's just me because mm. there's always a burgundy and gold for me. They can't control what I call them. They're the burgundy and gold for me because that's my link to them is the colors, not the name. Mm. Right, right. Now, Doc, you played under I, what I believe is the best head coach of all time in Joe Gibbs. So I have to ask you, what is your assessment of Ron Rivera so far? Given with everything going on uh, outside of the – with the name change and all that, what do you – how do you think that he's handled the job so far? Well, again, I can't discuss him without discussing that he is has just beaten cancer. Mm. So he's done a phenomenal job. Mm. I recommended three weeks ago that he step down and take a week or so to get his body together. Mm. He opted out of that, and he fought through it. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy for him and his family, but it definitely affected his team mm-hmm. because he couldn't be the strong lion that he really is because he was tired and he's beaten down. Right. And so if you think that that doesn't affect the overall deal, then you're just crazy. And then his, his assistants had a chance to step up and fill it out of it. And they flashed for a minute, but they failed too because mm-hmm. they didn't win. They didn't get the job done. Their units now, nah, they went through three, they've had three quarterbacks since he's been here. So, it, you know, it could be worse, but it could also be better. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I really do appreciate you coming by, Doc, and uh, being able to squeeze us into your very busy schedule because I know you yeah. you uh, have a lot going on, but I really no, do no, appreciate it. Was just today. It was a busy ah. day. It ain't like this all <laughs> but it was busy today. Yeah, no question, man. No, we, I do for the industry. We're industry. I love the fact that. You guys, you're living the dream. Like I live the dream. I'm doing what I want to do in an air arena that I chose mm. and studied and worked to try to perfect the skill set that would allow me to do it forever. Mm. And you guys are doing the same thing. So I support wow. the industry at all times because this is not easy. You make it look easy because you guys do a good job at it. But, and you, you know, wow. you, you don't make a lot of friends at this if they're unrealistic. And let's mm-hmm. face it, most of our audience knows very little about the sports they like. Correct. Mm-hmm. They don't have to. They do it for the thrill of it. Yeah. It's fun for them. It's business for me, and it's business for you. And so as long as they can take it in its purity, we have no problems. But I'm not going to make up nothing for nobody. 
mm. and ever. I'm gonna call it the way it is. They get paid and I'll deal with it, mm. you know, or censor me, you know. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm waiting on that. It'd be phenomenal, you know, what I mean? be better than my cap, because I'm not doing any. I'm not malicious. I actually want you to win, mm. All right. but I don't tolerate your BS, mm. you know. And when you get soft and doing all that, I'm not playing that because you're not doing anything that I haven't seen done. Mm. So you, you can right. call that engineer. You may practice less, hit less, have speakers and stuff in your helmets and all that, but still same football. It's football. Dude, I absolutely love the energy doc. That yes. This was a phenomenal interview. I can't thank you enough for taking the time out and being able to talk with this brother. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get you on again uh, later on always. in the season. Always. Masks, gloves, be safe, my friends. Wash your hands and whatever. And some of you fellas need to wash more than that because some of y'all need to get that water. Y'all be good, man. I'm out. All okay. right, Doc. Doc. Have, Have a good, a good night, one, man. Appreciate the kind words. <laughs> Take it easy. Thank you very much, Doc. You got it, man. Anytime. All right, everybody. That was a, a, f- hey, such a he great brought, He brought the energy on that one. Yeah. I, I absolutely loved that interview. Um, I understand the whole predictions thing, but he is so spot on, and I love his attitude towards things where it's a no-nonsense. Right. You yeah. know, like, I'll give you credit when you win, but when you screw everything up, I'm not going to give you credit. Right. I love how, yeah, I love how blunt and honest he is, just straight exactly. to the point. Like, no if sure you're not, code. yeah, he's not just going to suck up to him because he's Ron Rivera and he wants him to do good, and he, he's expected to do well and he's had a tough time he's just calling it how it is they haven't won anything what what they're not doing good d's all across the board not even just that he's a former like former obviously alumni so So he knows right he knows what it takes a super bowl winner so he's not gonna like you said sugarcoat he's not gonna be oh well you know i can't be harder on the team because i used to be a former teammate or a former player of the team no he's gonna tell it like it is and you gotta love analysts and guys in the media and just people overall that keep it real Man. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So, guys, we have been, we're able to talk to Doc Walker the, uh, for the alumni game going up against the Bengals. So let's get into our predictions against the Bengals and how this team can actually win against them. So, Reed, I'll start with you. What is the one area of the game that they would have to dominate? Well, obviously, like Doc said, uh, you got to win at the line of scrimmage. But I'm just going to go with the same thing that I went with for like the last month. You c- you got to stop beating yourselves. You, yeah, you yeah. have to stop with these stupid penalties and stupid turnovers at inopportune times. And you got to start better. You, you got to play better early on in the game because like we've seen in literally just about every game except for the Dallas game. First half, terrible. Get down 17 to three. Second half, we come back. We play fantastic. They're right in the game and then they, they'll manage to lose it. So they just got to play a more consistent game for four quarters and uh, stop beating themselves with the stupid turnovers and penalties. Yeah, it's so funny because whenever we do this prediction pod before the game, the first thing I start out with is, you know, they keep shooting themselves in the foot, and I don't see it <laughs> happening again. Well, it continues right. to happen. So I'm, I'm it's every week. Yeah, I'm not. I'm done playing that game. So what about yeah. you, Hall? What's the one area of the game? Uh, I'm actually going to agree with Doc. We got to establish the line of scrimmage on both sides. Um, obviously, in our both of our wins this season. The defensive line has taken over. They've that's been true leading force for the team. So I think obviously that's the game plan. That's the blueprint for us winning games. The defensive line is going to have to take over this week. This is a bad offensive line for the Bengals. I think Joe Burrow is either the second most or the top hit quarterback in the league right now. And again, I mean, I know we've been saying this for weeks when they've been going up against bad offensive lines, but if there's any week to come out and do it, this is the one. And hopefully they can get it done because if not, I think that Joe Burrow is going to shred us apart. Yeah. Uh, well, look, I, I agree with you, but my area of the game that the Washington football team has to do well at in order to win, it's set, it's getting after uh, Joe Burrow. And that's to be quite frank. The Bengals are not a great rushing team. They're actually just above like a the Washington football team. They average uh, 105 yards per game where the Washington football team averages 91. So there's not a huge difference between the two, which tells you, that they throw the ball a lot. And last week, leaving with only one sack, and none of them by the defensive line, only coming from Cameron Curl, if they can get after Joe Burrow, like Doc said, early, control that game, dominate it from the start, saying we're not going to allow you to sit back and do whatever you want all game. We're coming after you. And like Hall said, they're one of the most sacked teams in the NFL right now. That's the one area that they do have to dominate because if they're getting Alex Smith hit all the time, it's not going to be good. And yeah, especially talking about our defensive line. That This is something that I feel like happens almost every week where we're like, oh, well, the defensive line should dominate the Giants' offensive line. They should, you know, they should dominate this offensive line. And 
it doesn't happen because they end yeah. up getting down and they can't rush the passer like right. they want to. They have to they have to guess is it run, is it pass, what's going on? So they they just keep screwing themselves over, man. They they literally keep beating themselves. I, I don't want to say that because I'm a homer and oh we should be undefeated. That's not realistic, but they do have they do have an opportunity in every game, and you can see you can literally pinpoint about one play in each game that they lost the game right there. Yeah, and uh, I was listening to the junkies this morning, and they were like going over like the presser and how Ron was kind of aggravated with the media and kind of prickly and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. They were like, you can tell he's frustrated, and it's kind of like I wanted to call in, but I was driving, so I just didn't do it. But I wanted to call in and say, well, of course he's frustrated. Yeah, these last three, maybe even four games that we've lost. These have been winnable games, and then yeah. we've literally shot ourselves in the foot. The teams has not beat us; we've beaten ourselves. Exactly. So of course he's thinking to himself, "We should be at least four and five, five and four right now, not two and seven. Of course I'm frustrated. I came in here and I said this is going to be a rebuild while winning games because you saw the potential. And in the second half of these games, they're living up to the potential. They're not living up in the first half, so that's why he's so frustrated. Yeah, Hall, you're speaking to my spirit animal because that's what I've been saying all these. What weeks. is a spirit animal? Right. So what the, is it? Five turnovers was the difference <laughs> between them fox? having two win over the Giants. <laughs> yeah. It no, is. it's yeah. a deer. There's no. <laughs> oh, speaking of this, no. That's my last name spelled backwards, by the way. <laughs> oh, shit. That is of no fact. significance. I'm just saying. That's a little <laughs> Snapple fact. <laughs> All right. Now, so I want to get into your guys' predictions game. I know that Rick uh, Doc Walker doesn't do that, but I, I do. I like I like predictions. I don't mind being wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who has the better game on Sunday, Alex Smith or Joe Burrow? Maybe start uh, I'll go Joe Burrow just because he's – I know he's has the most pass attempts in the league so far. Uh, Zach Taylor apparently just loves to drop back and get Joe Burrow hit. But obviously Joe Burrow likes to drop back and get hit and he likes to throw bombs. So I'm going to go just overall numbers-wise, it'll be Burrow. Overall, like eye test and what I see in the field might be a different story. Mm. Right. Yeah, I, I'm going to go the same. I'm going to say Joe Burrow is going to have the better game. And uh, just because I, I just think Joe Burrow is better right now. I, I know that Joe Burrow does get hit a lot. But one thing that I've noticed specifically about Burrow is Burrow has beefed up a lot since his, since he left LSU. Mm-hmm. Like his arms look bigger. He just looks like a more solid person. That was something I was kind of nervous about with him coming out. He's a lot bigger. He's, he's built to take some of these hits now, and he does a good job avoiding the pressure. I, I think that Burrow has a pretty good game because you're starting to see this Washington team, in, and it's starting to seem like the wheels are starting to fall off of this defense. Okay. Yeah, look, I actually think it's going to be Alex, to be perfectly honest I with you. I can see it. Um, I, the only reason I believe that is because the Bengals on the ground defensively give up 133 yards on average. Detroit gave up a lot, too. Per know? game. I, 100%, I 100% with you. I get it. But I feel like they're not going to put themselves – in the hole that they put themselves in last week. You know what I mean? So that being, that being said, I do believe that Alex Smith will be able to use play action in this game. Unlike he was able to do last week. I still think he'll be able to get the ball downfield. Um, and I think that they, something's building here. You know, I, I, I don't think that this is just a coincidence that he did well the past couple of weeks. The, the Detroit is actually pretty good against the pass. It was the run that they were terrible at. And, right. They carved them up easily. What, 390 yards he threw for? And that's that's a lot of that, though, is because, like, they couldn't run right. the ball. They just couldn't. So they had to throw it. They had no other choice. But they got down so down by so much, they had, they had to figure it out. I think so he it had, was, like, 40-plus attempts and something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think he had, like, 55 attempts or something. It was, attempts, like, 350 yeah. yards or something like that. Yeah. Like, it was all both career highs. So, but I could see, I can, you're hundred percent right. Kyle. I could totally see that where Alex is just back there and he has another big game, another 300 plus yard game. Yeah. And I would love to be able to see it, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. Okay. Now, who would you think it's going to be the MVP of this game? Mm-hmm. Um, not last week's. You sure about that? Um, <laughs> I'm going to stick our, the, the Washington or Bengals as a matter of mm, which uh, whatever you want. Okay. I'm just going to say that the MVP of the game is going to be Joe Burrow. Um, I'm also going to say that on the Washington, it'll be Montez Sweat. I think he's going to have another pretty mm-hmm. decent game. But overall, I think that I'm so sick and tired of picking Washington to win and having them lose that I'm going to go with Joe Burrow. <laughs> Hopefully you're the saving grace for us this week. That's what Reed. I'm that's what right. I'm, uh, the reverse psychology, I'm all about it, brother. Fingers what about crossed. you, Hall? Yeah. Um, I was, I was going to go with Antonio Gibson, but you know what? I'm off that train just like Reed because every time I say he's going to be the guy and he's going to be have a baller game – it's almost a complete opposite. Mm. But uh, I'll go with the guys who had the hot hand the past two weeks. The guy that's had 
a light, a nice cohesion with Alex Smith. I'll go J.D. McKissick. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be heavily involved in the pass game again this week. I think that if they can't get the run going, they are going to have a lot of short passes like they did to McKissick to kind of facilitate that uh, running game, the outside zone, stuff like that. So I think that McKissick, if they do pull the win off, will be the key guy in offense. Real fast, McKissick has been targeted more than any other player in the NFL over the last two weeks, mm -hmm. even more than wide receivers. Fantasy targeted killer. 48 times, yep. So if you got him in fantasy, start him again. Yeah, and Reed, you made up uh, made a, a really funny point last week, and I think that we should go with that because right. they've been down so much early in these games. You said instead of predicting the entire game, why don't we just predict what the score is going to be in the first half? 17-3. <laughs> it's always always what it is that's, that's what i'm going with as you're going 17-3 what about you Bengals, yeah. um i'll go 17 to no nah, i'll go uh i'll go 20 to 10 Bengals at halftime okay. 20 to 10 yeah, Bengals at halftime yeah uh, i'm gonna go tie it up i, I think it's gonna go 13 13 i think we're gonna oh, go wow. at halftime oh um, wow yeah, I just feel like that's what this game. I feel like these are two teams because the Washington football team, you know, like whenever they played a team like this, if they were coming off like a win where they felt confident, like that's when they would lose this game. Okay, but right. the way that they've played and they know that they can't play that way all four quarters, I really hope that changes. I this hope week, so, dude. Too. I'm praying, yeah. dude. I'm praying, please. Uh, I just, I know you're a glass half full kind of guy, Kyle, and I this appreciate would, this that. This would be but... the one time where they come out in the first half and they're just like right. rolling out. They'll, they'll be watch. the ones. They'll be the ones that are up seventeen. Yeah. They'll three. be up they twenty-seven to three. Second, yeah, and bomb. They come out in the second yeah. half and just like, what are you doing? Watch. That's gonna like we always say. It's always something that you don't expect with them. So watch. Right. Since we've made jokes about it now, that's exactly what's gonna happen. <laughs> right. And uh, Hall, you made a you made a really good point earlier because you talked about the offensive line for the Cincinnati Bengals not being very good. So let's go down the pro football focus ratings for each one. Left tackle Jonah Williams, the second-year left tackle out of Alabama. He has a 74.8, the highest-rated uh, lineman on not the bad. line there. Michael Jordan, their left guard, a 58 rating. And then Trey Hopkins, their center, a 65.7. And Alex Richmond, who's actually questionable, is has a 60.7. And then Bobby Hart, their right tackle, has a 70.4. Okay. And look, I know what everyone's going to say. These offensive lines that they've faced the past couple weeks, they they look just like this. But they can be beat. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Jonah Jonah Williams is somebody who he's I think he's a little bit out of his element playing left tackle. At least that's what I thought when he was drafted. I know he had to miss all last year, but he's obviously he's played decent this year. I mean, obviously having a mid seventies grade is it's pretty good. He, he's not playing terrible, but he's somebody who can definitely be beat, you know, especially by somebody like Montez sweat or chase young. So they just, they, they should, they're so much more talented than a lot of these offensive lines that they go up against just for whatever reason, they just, they're just not rushing the passer like they should be lately. Mm -hmm. And it's super frustrating. Maybe Doc's right. Doc brought up a good point about Chase Young. Maybe, maybe he's right the about groin. that. Maybe just yeah. his explosion just isn't the same right now. And well, I, I'm sure he, I'm sure Doc is, is correct right. with that, that the groin obviously is still uncomfortable for Chase, but put that on top of him getting double teamed almost every and single snap team, right. and triple teamed sometimes that's going to happen, you know, and, yeah. and that's As the a point, especially. Right. Yeah. And that's what, that's what basically what doc was saying is if you're getting beat like that with one guy, then that's a problem. But right. if you're not getting pressures, you're not getting sacks when you're getting double triple teamed, I mean, I'll deal with it because you're doing your job. Uh, and, essentially. And, yeah. yeah and that's, mean, Oh, go ahead, all. No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say they need to prevent the big play early because that's always seems mm. to be something that that screws them over. Is they'll yeah. give up a big pass play early on, like like they did last week, and then all of a sudden they just kind of lose focus as a defense, and then it's like, okay, well, is it gonna be a run or a pass? What are we gonna do here? And then all of a sudden that's where it start they start getting discombobulated. It seems like they just need to stick to their game, play the run on the way to the pass, and, and just get after Joe Burrow because you can get sacks there. Yeah, yeah, and I was just gonna say Doc said it best where. If Chase is taking on two guys, sometimes three guys, Allen, Payne, Settle, Montez, Kerrigan when he's in there, they got to win the one-on-ones. Otherwise, I mean, again, he's, uh, Joe Burrs is going to be sitting back there all day. He's going to be hitting T. Higgins. He's going to be hitting Tyler Boyd. Mm. A.J. Green might have a resurgence all of a sudden. So they got weapons on that team. I mean, Joe yeah. Mixon's a, like a top yeah. 10 to 12 back in this league. I don't think he's so, going to play, though. Oh, he's out? 
Uh, I I have them. I saw, he's, I saw he's questionable. Yeah, I, I saw he's on, questionable. Yeah, I have him in fantasy, and they they're right now they haven't projected a zero, which tells okay. you that it's well, not yeah, looking he's probably, good. He's probably not going to play. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, either way, I mean, shit, uh, Giovanni Bernard with his weird picture, looking like a fifty year old dude, is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's he's still a pretty decent back in his league as yeah. well. Is he catch passing back or pass catching back? He's a little scat back, a small guy that can get behind the offensive line and kind of disappear, hop out. Next thing you know, he's five yards down the field. So I mean. People are taking kind of like, oh, it's the Bengals. Look at their record. They've been bad for this many years. That number one overall pick. They still got weapons. It's the defense that's bad. But if the offense can't take advantage, then they're going to stomp all over us. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to say, Jesse Bates, the safety for the Cincinnati Bengals. So good. Playing so he well. He is rated by a pro football focus as the number one safety out of 87 qualifying safeties. He has a 91 grade. The dude is a good safety and that yep. should be the number one person that they are keying in on on every snap making yep. sure that he is not turning over the football because that dude is obviously incredibly good i didn't know that until yeah. i looked at the pff see i knew it because uh in in shook's league the idp league where you have to start three defensive backs three linebackers three defensive linemen on top of everything on offense i have jesse bates uh, i picked him up a little under the radar and he's been playing so well he's just been dominant also picked up cam curl this week because i think cam curl's gonna have another decent game um but yeah i jesse bates has been fantastic he's honestly one of the most improved players in the entire nfl if not the most improved player in the nfl and and he's somebody you really got to watch out for now paul and reed you guys both i guess we we consider ourselves a little bit of uh you know draft evaluators you know player uh scouting you know Tyler Boyd right now is a leading receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals with 60 receptions, 625 yards receiving, and three touchdowns. Is he the number one target on that offense that the Washington football team should target and be worried about? Hall, I'll start with you. Yeah, without a doubt. I don't know. T. Higgins is kind of coming on, too. There you go. But actually, you know what? No, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say T. Higgins is the guy you got to key in on because him and Joe Burrow came in together. I know they didn't have rookie mini camps or whatever, but I was a guy that was really high on T. Higgins. I know that uh, I wasn't. You guys were kind of like, yeah. yeah, you guys weren't. <laughs> but I thought like I just knew like he's not putting up like the the numbers as far as like the forty time and the stuff like that. Vertical, the vertical jump, vertical, yeah, vertical, all that. But he's one of those guys where he gets on the field, the eye test. He just says he's he's a different type of dude, and he's showing it this year. He's uh, I think he's like in the top ten for like rookie of the year right now. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's not going to win it because he's a receiver. But, yeah, he's definitely the guy we got to key in on because, again, he's the big play guy. He's the downfield guy. And he can even be the short possession guy. And he's just all around good receiver. And if they let him get deep, which we give up some pretty big plays, he could definitely kill us. Now, what about yeah. you, Reed? Um, yeah, I would still say that Boyd is the person that you really got to watch out for. Hall's completely right about T. Higgins. Uh, he's he's the a guy that you really got to watch for the big play coming from but but i just think that you need to take away somebody that joe burr is going to target all the time i think he's comfortable with boyd he's somebody who's going to look for in third and long he's somebody who's always going to try to get the ball to uh he's just comfortable with him and he's a very solid wide receiver so i think if you can take him away and try to limit t higgins big playability then you should be okay yeah also which is going to like hopefully will hopefully he'll play but if not if Troy Apke's back there playing safety this Sunday, yeah, I know. That's why I'm like T. Higgins is gonna kill Higgins us. Yeah, yeah, he's T. Higgins is gonna dig in, and, and that's something too that Joe Burrow is so good at, at escaping the pocket and making a play downfield yeah. that like you are gonna see T. Higgins match up with somebody like Troy Apke running yeah. free, and it's just gonna be like you better hope this pass isn't accurate, which it will be <laughs> because Joe Burrow is extremely accurate. And then so, yep, you had to go and steal mine. I know it's the easy one. But it's Joe Burrow, in my opinion. They have to be able – I want Jack Del Rio to blitz at least once every three downs. And, I, and I'm not kidding yeah. when I say no, that. 100%. I don't think that's overdoing it. You no. have to pressure him and make sure that ball's getting out of his hands. Right? Look at his stats for this year. 242 out of 370 attempts, 2,485 yards, 12 touchdowns, and five interceptions. Right. The and dude it's pretty is pretty solid. He is the offense. I don't care what right. anybody says. And he is making the things happen. And people want to always point to the battle between him and Justin Herbert as who's the best rookie quarterback. I know Justin Herbert's playing fantastic. I don't want to take anything away from him, but Joe Burrow is doing so much more with less. I think Burrow's still the highest rated according to PFF, uh, surprisingly, over Herbert. But he doesn't have any of the weapons that that they have over there in 
in LA and, and he's still making plays and doing a fantastic job. I love what Joe Burrow is doing. Yeah. And look, the Bengals last five games, uh, they have lost four of their last five, just like the Washington football team. But the five, the four teams that they've lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who they got dominated by uh, the Cleveland Browns, the Indianapolis Colts and the Baltimore Ravens. So you can kind of say, look at it, say, well, this is, are, are they a good team? And they're just going against better competition, or is this just a team that just hangs around with other uh, other good teams? It just, it's fool's gold. What do you guys think? I mean, this is a team that came out and dominated the Titans, which is a playoff caliber team. Got to the AFC Championship last year. I know this is a year to year league. You can't really base what you did last year on this year, but that's a high powered offense, and they only put up like 17 points or something like that. So, with that being said, what was the question again? I don't. I don't even remember, dude. Now you oh, flip me on, out. Guys, are the Bengals a, a good team? Are they better than the record suggests? I'm already oh, thinking about yeah, the next yeah, question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think they're a better team than their record suggests, only because their defense is so bad, the offensive line is so bad. Mm. But they are the type of team that if you take them lightly or kind of don't prepare during the week, they will come out and hit you in the mouth, mm. and they'll put up mad points on you, and you'll be leaving the field looking like. Damn, how did we just get blown out by 20 points by the Cincinnati Bengals? Like, what? Right. So, mm. they're, they're, they're that type of team, a sleeper team, I could call them, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think everybody kind of coming into the year assumed that the Bengals are going to be the worst team in the NFL again. A lot of people did, just when you go back and look at mock drafts and stuff, and they have sort of outperformed. I think that, that mm-hmm. just having a franchise quarterback goes a long way. Uh, even when you don't have the best offensive line, you, you can still make things happen. So, like Hall said, I don't necessarily think that they're – better than their record suggests, but I do think that they're a team that could beat anybody on any given Sunday and yeah. that they are a very, they could be a decent team, especially down the road, but right now they can definitely beat, beat you pretty bad. Yeah. I think that they're, they are what their record suggests. In my opinion, they're four defensive linemen for this weekend. They're going to be facing against Washington football team, Sam Hubbard, 57.8 grade, Christian Covington with a 55.9, Xavier Williams with a 49.3, and then Carl Lawson with a 64.4. Right. They don't scare you. And I know that the Washington football team's offensive line is looking a little weak right now due to injury. But you're this is kind of a blessing, if in my opinion, that they're facing the Bengals in a a lack of the pass rush without Geno Adkins. Yeah, Uh, 100 percent. I think that you got to really take advantage of that. And like Doc said, come out and try to run the ball. Just come out and try to try to run it down their throats. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you should be able to strictly overpower this offensive line. They don't have anybody that should be Brandon Sheriff regularly or, or Morgan Moses, no matter where he lines up or even chase rule year for that matter. So mm-hmm. I think that Washington, as long as they can game plan it right, they should come out and, and play well, but it's Washington. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> what, what can go you wrong? Never, <laughs> yeah. You never know what you're going to get. They're like right. a, like a mixed pack of like Skittles or Star Wars or something. You just open right. the pack. You're like, Oh, I got three pinks in a row. Nice. Or it's just like, uh, I got, yeah, five reds in a row. They're not they're not Starbursts where you know the order of them when you when you get a pack. You <laughs> right. know, it's, but they're yeah, you don't know what's gonna happen. So yeah. let's before we go into the next topic, let's get the predictions for the football game and predictions. Hall, let's start with you. Uh, like the game predictions. Mm-hmm. Uh man, I'm kind of in the like boat of like thinking of Reed, where it's kind of like I pick him every week and they just let me down. So should I pick the Bengals this week and hopefully they just like counteract let me letting me down? But I'm not going to. I think that this is the one another this is like a another not Dallas game where they're just gonna completely dominate. But I do think that this is one of the this is gonna be the game where they don't come out in the first half. They might be down by the end of the first half, but they're not gonna be down because they shot themselves in the foot. They're going to be down just because of the Bengals' offense is a little bit better than the defense in the first half. We all know the first half is whatever with the defense. Del Rio goes in, makes adjustments. Second half, they come out, they give up three, six, ten points. So I kind of expect that to be the kind of game flow again. I just kind of expect the offense and them not to shoot themselves in the foot again. So with that being said, I will go Washington 23, Bengals 21. Okay, well, good. I'm glad that you picked that. I, I, my prediction for the game is 24-13. I think that Joe Burrow will still be able to get the ball downfield. They'll be able to get a touchdown maybe off of a, a pass interference penalty. 
But this defense this year has been bend but don't break. And I know a lot of people are probably going to have an issue with me saying that, but it's true. It's 100% they, true. They've done a very good job at not being able, not giving up a massive amount of points. And right. I think against this offensive line, with how much they are giving up pressure on their quarterback, I do believe that they can c- control this game from the start. I Hopefully this will be reminiscent of the Cowboys game and the way that they played that. So I believe that the fo- Washington football team will win it 24-13. All right, so uh, I, I said that we were going to be down 17-3 to three at the half, of course. So uh, this is how it's going to play out, mark my words. <laughs> we're going to be down 17-3 to, 17 to three at the half. We're going to come out in the second half. We're going to have a touchdown on our opening drive, and we're going to play okay from then on out, and it's going to end up being a 20-17 to 17 win for the Bengals. We're going to hold them to a field goal in the second half, and next week we're going to be like, well, again, they only held them to three points. They held them to three points in the second half. So as long as you can build on that, it's, it's <laughs> going to be, and it's going to be the same, same movie all over. I've seen it, <laughs> seen it, seen it. That, that's a great, that's a great uh, prediction there, sir, because it's most likely what we've learned is yeah. that history repeats itself. Also, yeah. I just realized that I said, oh, they'll be down 20 to 10 at halftime, but my final score is going to be 21, 23. So that's kind of impossible. <laughs> so <laughs> somebody hits a free throw. Said, I'll go 19. <laughs> 19 to uh 10 at halftime, which no, because they're only a safety. 18 to 10 at halftime. There we go. Final score 23 21. Yeah, okay. I like that. I go. like that a lot. Now, let's move on to a question that I asked Doc because I want to get your guys' opinions on this. Jason Wright said the Washington football team could possibly be the permanent name or Washington FC, like uh, the soccer clubs over in the, in the uh, European countries. Reed, what's your opinion? No, I mean, Washington football team, it, it has kind of grown on me. Um, at first, I thought it was a little bit just like, all right, come on. But and I know a lot of people don't like it, but it is what it is. But Washington FC, no, I, I'm, you know, I, I just don't, I don't think you know, it's not for me. You know, Washington FC, well, we're not a football club. You know, we're a football team. So, I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't I don't want that. I don't want it. But then again, it's also better than some of these some of these submissions that they've had, like the Washington heroes or the, the Washington, stop, <laughs> the Washington dude. monsters. And it's just like, stop. <laughs> this is serious. Stop. I don't want your life, yeah, I knew, but I, I don't knew, want your life. I knew you were going to do that too. And <laughs> talk about that because I saw some of those and that was yeah. uh, ridiculous. At, to say the, least. the Washington Georges. Yeah. And it, like, they didn't even like, they didn't give like the normal ones out there, which was like so weird to me. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't have more options. You're only giving us four options. And those are the four options. <laughs> right. The Washington DCs. Right. But like they're trying to like force us to be like, well, I guess we got to go with football team. The other ones suck. Right. Yeah. That's, that, that's the craziest thing to me because like they put that out there saying, Hey, everyone give us your fan submissions. And then a couple days later, Jason Wright, Jason Wright comes out and says, oh, Washington football team could be this state of the name. Yeah. Well, I think after he saw the names that they suggested, he was like, ah, okay, man, never mind. <laughs> Watch, they're, they're, it's going to end up being the Washington Defensive Club, and they're going to end up being called the Washington DCs. And it's just going to be like very Washington creative, guys. 32s. Washington 32. The Washington Tremendous. <laughs> the Washington Tremendous. Um, I, I, look, I really don't like it i not that i don't like it i don't mind watching a football team it i've gotten yeah. used to it i've gotten used to saying it by now it only took a couple months it's not bad but my one issue is that when ron rivera stood there on the podium and told us we're getting a name that is going to be able to stand for a hundred years you know I, I get that but that's not that type of name Washington football team that's yeah. not one of those names that you're like yeah like that's the name. Like, oh, I, yeah. I understand that this is Washington. I get it. Like, everyone knows this is Washington. That's what we are. Why do we have to name ourselves football team? I, I'm pretty sure we know what we are. You know what I mean? Like, I, it just blows my mind. I just, I just thought they played baseball. I I'm so confused by all of it, but that, a lot of credit to Jason Wright because he knows what he's doing. He does. He's he knows how to serve he's the He's screwing pot. with he all of us, and yeah. it's going to be a name that's not on there. But I will say I liked Rough Riders. I would uh, be. I was a big DMX fan back yeah. in the day, so I was like, <laughs> mind your business, I mean, hey, lady. I wouldn't mind them coming out to DMX like every game. That'd be tight. Uh, yeah. yeah, dude, that, that would get me hyped. They, they played yeah, at a practice saying. a couple weeks ago. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's yeah. how it goes, dude. Uh, all right, they can, they can have DMX give them motivational speeches at halftime. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we gotta get in the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> start barking at them. <laughs> They're gonna be in the defensive line, like barking at the offensive linemen yeah. and shit. The D gonna give it to you. 
<laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, man. All right, everybody. Well, that's probably going to wrap us up for this show. I really appreciate uh, the Alumni Weekend coming and join us with Rick Doc Walker. It, so much energy that he yeah. brought. I mean, yeah. I, I have coffee here. I didn't even need to drink it because he, that dude juiced me up so much. Uh, oh, the, he was absolutely incredible. So, Doc, I thank you for coming on and being able to get us ready for this game this week in the Alumni Weekend. Really do appreciate it. All right, everybody. I'm Kyle. I'm Hall. And this is your boy, we have yeah, baby, please. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually pretty good. <laughs> because, because I'm a gangster, Mr. So. Oh, no. <laughs> that's my best impression right now. Dude. Uh, that's, my, that's, uh, that's fucking great. That's so that's great. a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's All right, everybody. <laughs> Catch us on Sunday. We'll have another pod for you. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be on Sunday night or possibly Monday. Um, I might be having a stop with the uh, HT We Are podcast. Not 100% sure yet when that's going to go down. So either Sunday night or Monday morning, expect a new episode. All right, everybody. We'll catch you guys. Hopefully, Washington football team gets a W.